Hey, buddy, do you like to swing? Come with me. You're listening to Emma Claire, the best of all things swinging at Prohibition Radio. Hello, I'm Emma Claire and welcome to the Prohibition Radio Show. I am super excited because today I have, for the very first time, a chat pop guest on the show. That's right, the king of chat pop, Mr. Professor Elemental, will be joining me for an interview and also supplying his top 10 electro swing tracks. But for now, opening the show, it's Speakeasy Streets with the Speakeasy song taken from their brand new album, Back Alley Beats.
What a super strong start it's been to 2021 for Electro Swing. That release included, that was Swing Growers, Rose, taken from their forthcoming album on Freshly Squeezed Music, which is coming out in March. Mission MCR. all the money <laughs> Will bound, dealing what I'm wrong, but I get no one down. 
to the Prohibition Radio Show. Just been listening to the sounds of DJ Maiba with Cosmic Swing, another brand new track. Well, if this is the sign of things to come for the rest of 2021, then I think we are in for a another amazing year for Electro Swing. Absolutely great track there. Now it is time to welcome to the Prohibition Radio Show for the very first time a chat pop legend, Mr. Professor Elemental. I had so much fun chatting to Paul. It was last minute, so I really cannot wait to share this one with you. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. What's that you say? You gotta turn on the radio. Okay. You got to listen to Prohibition Radio with Emma Claire. You got to listen to Prohibition Radio with Emma Claire. Hi Paul, how are you? You know, yeah, good, thank you. Surprisingly good, all things considered. Oh, that is the right answer. That was brilliant to hear. And I, I know you've been super busy, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to speak to me. I'm just happy to speak to anyone who isn't my immediate family, to be honest. I'm just yeah, <laughs> delighted, delighted to be asked. Oh, I get that feeling. And you know what? You're my first chat pop, chat pop guest, which is super exciting. So, I mean, I, I guess there probably will be some people listening to this show that are like, what's chat pop? I've never heard of it. So can you describe it in three words? Uh, it is eccentric, optimistic, rap music i, I love it eccentric is definitely a key word there and optimistic we love a bit of optimism at prohibition so yeah that's a great great way to describe it and um, what what would you say the difference is between chat pop and hip hop as well because you know there's hop in the in the words but i guess they're slightly different well, when, when chat pop sort of first came out and it was, you know, was getting bandied about, I hated the term because it sounded to me like if, because I'm a massive hip hop 
fan of old and it sounded like something that if someone told me about it I'd say well that sounds <laughs> <laughs> Posh blokes doing hip hop oh god that sounds awful so it takes a kind of little bit of sort of uh, digging into to kind of get into this sort of uh, the the nuances of it because it is largely a sort of parody of the British class system done through uh, a very sort of eccentric and silly form of hip hop uh, but it is just hip hop it's just hip hop in a funny hat really uh, I love it, it spend, we spend a lot I think I think all of the um, people involved in it uh, also spend quite a lot of time going back to the golden era of hip hop uh, and the kind of you know the joyful sounds of the 90s yes god bless the 90s is one of the best eras for music i love it and what kind of brought you to the wonderful world of chat pop and to become professor elemental as well i'm really curious yeah it was a strange little journey really i was doing more traditional hip-hop for years in brighton um and just you know the world didn't really need another white middle-aged middle-class battle rapper <laughs> I wasn't great. I wasn't great in that world either. It didn't. It never quite suited me, much as I tried really hard. Um, and then my friends were putting on this sort of Victorian sort of variety show, and I just I stole the costume off uh, someone I knew, uh, and just went and did it as a one-off, just to see what you know, <laughs> to try and do rapping in a character. Uh, and then the world just exploded. I was like, ah, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Steampunk, I found all the tribe of nerds I wanted to hang out with, and it just opened doors into all of these wonderful, strange adventures. That's amazing. And obviously, you mentioned the steampunk. I'm curious as to how steampunk and chatbot became acquainted. <laughs> Yeah, they're like best friends, man. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it just sort of came about at the same time. And, you know, as with any creative thing, a good 50% of your success at it is timing and sort of the luck of when you happen to be doing it. And I started doing Professor Elemental just as steampunk took off. So I went uh -huh. to get some shows in America and then it all sort of joined together. So, But the two things sort of coincide quite nicely because there's a lot of gentle parody involved, a lot of people who don't care about looking silly uh, or enjoy dressing up in fancy clothes or going into strange universes that they yeah. made themselves. So it ties in really nicely. Chat pop and steampunk are particularly nice subcultures because there's no in it at all there's like two three maybe three I admit maybe three out of thousands that's good going I reckon did you know what that's pretty good numbers yeah I'd say you're on to, I'd say you're on to win it there yeah absolutely <laughs> involved in over the years that's you know that is I think a very high ratio of it to not I think we've done very well yeah I think you've you've done really good there and you say obviously you come from a hip-hop background but what music were you into kind of pre-hip-hop era no, that's it. You know, you know what nerds are like. With nerds, we we kind of like focus in on a thing and explore that thing until it's completely done. And the same with horror and comic books and stuff. Yeah. Um, my dad raised me on old soul and funk music. Like, he used to sit me down and say, "You're not moving until you've listened to this entire Isaac Hayes album." And oh, yes, sir. <laughs> um, that was good education because that's the basis of the kind of hip hop that I grew into. Absolutely, that's really cool. Cool dad points. Good. Dad. Funk and soul. Yeah, yeah I love it. And. I'd also like to ask you, because as well as the Professor Elemental character, um, there's the lovely Jeffrey who features in a lot of your music. Um, so I just want to know how and when did he come to life? How, how did he suddenly appear in your tracks? Like, you know, like most of it, it was sort of an accident. Like the, um, when I started doing this Victorian variety show, we did it for a few years with a whole crew of us. Lots of people who, did, you know, just no one would go and watch on their own. And some people might watch if we were all gathered together. And I just had a line in the very first Professor song about, I have a pet orangutan with a mechanical <laughs> eye. Uh, and from then it kind of just expanded. Then we got, a, you know, a toy orangutan puppet and put a little LED light in him. <laughs> the audience with him for a while. And yeah, he just seems like the perfect foil, the perfect thing that someone like the Professor would have. Professor and Jeffrey, have they always got on or have there been any fallings out along the way? It depends on the, it's interesting, as, as it's kind of broadened out and other people have written like Professor comics or Professor books, um, sometimes the relationship changes depending on who's writing the character. Like ah. in the comics, Jeffrey's like a pretty wise butler and I'm a bit of a, a, a fool. But in the <laughs> albums, I like the idea that he's just a real orangutan, that I'm stuck in a suit and he's the sh worst butler imaginable. And I'm just, I love him to bits, but I'm quite cross with him most of the time. And I think that's... <laughs> 
that works quite well as a balance. <laughs> I love it. A bit of a love hate relationship. I'm just imagining Jeffrey and his little bow tie and his little with his little tray <laughs> coming along. Like, like, also being impossible to train, like having an arrangement. Yeah. But it would be awful. It would be the worst thing ever. So I, I like that I've created some a terrible situation for myself. Absolutely. I love it. And your, your songs tell such great stories. They've given me so many laughs. But I mean, oh, no, so. Okay. Uh, no, I, I just want to know, like, where do you get your inspiration from? Because it's just so creative and so imaginative. Uh, well, a lot of it comes from Tom Caravana, the guy who makes all my beats. Mm -hmm. um, he just comes up with songs that are so evocative, and as soon as I hear it, I'm like, oh my god, that sounds like an invasion of swans in the attic. <laughs> but lots of it comes from him, and we chat about what those sort of next story is going to be. Uh, but it's yeah a combination of the music and the circumstances it's sort of kind of it depends on where I am but the nice thing about the professor is I don't know about from your point of view but if you're a creative person mm -hmm. the idea usually isn't having enough ideas it's having too many ideas yeah uh, I mean, <laughs> off, you can kind of like fo you have to focus everything through the lens of him and I, I quite like that I definitely concur with that one I just when I'm writing music I tend to throw everything at it and then have to take things out along the way. It's like, yeah, oh, <laughs> too many like... things. <laughs> yeah, and it's also, and that's the hardest bit as well, because you know, as you as you know, making music, starting stuff's really easy, isn't it? Really finishing it off. Oh yeah. And you've got too familiar, and you're like, oh, is this gonna ever end? That's exactly. The it's 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 an art in itself, knowing when to, to say, you know, this is this is it. And one of your latest tracks that you've just released, um, so I was having a little sneak on your website, like I always do with gas. Um, the track name caught my eye, Snake Oil. Now that's quite unusual. So I was wondering what the inspiration behind that one was. That's cool, man. That's a good one to ask me about. Um, I went to Canada to stay with my friends. I was doing a show in Canada and I stayed with my friends, Carl and Leslie, who've got a thing called the Mental Floss Sideshow. Mm -hmm. And they love freak shows, this couple. And they have got a traveling freak show. No actual live freaks, but things they've created themselves. Yeah. The house is just, from the outside, totally normal. And you step inside and it is a wonderland of like jars and strange exhibits and tiny little signs and a bookshelf of like my dreams of just like all well, the most weird occult strange books. <laughs> uh, so I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning, had terrible jet lag, and I just wandered around the house in the dark dawn looking at the exhibits. So every single thing in that song is taken from something in their house. Uh, so I sent it to them and then the, there's a video on YouTube where they present some of the things that I'm yeah. talking about. So it's like a perfect creative circle. <laughs> uh, that's that is really cool. Yeah, I watched the video. I was like, my partner Chris as well, and I who interviewed you for when you did uh, Played at Prohibition, he was like, hmm, that's quite an intriguing track title. So you have to ask <laughs> about that. So thank you for clearing that one up. And your songs, uh, they're obviously made for sharing in front of a live audience. So how are you coping with not being able to perform them? I don't like it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Like, you know, and then we all, everybody needs a bit of affirmation. And I think if you're, you know, a middle-aged man, a bit, you know, sort of the breadwinner of a family, mm -hmm. one of the things about getting to the middle ages is there's no one to say, oh, well done. And this isn't just being a man, it's just been like just yeah. getting to that certain age. You know, if you're doing the housework or doing your job, no one's there going, oh, well done. Congratulations for doing the thing you're supposed to do. <laughs> um, and the nice thing for me is that I get to, you know, part of my job is going out and people applaud me for doing mm -hmm. very little other than shouting at them. So I definitely, I miss that. I miss that sort of sense of purpose and sharing yeah. and kind of all, all the rest of it. Uh, but I also didn't, I didn't embrace the live streaming thing. Uh, I've had it completely sorted by the time we come out. <laughs> yeah, by the time we were all in the clubs, you'd be like, I'm here now! <laughs> Guys! Oh, you've all gone back to <laughs> Oh, bless you. That was brilliant. Yeah, it, it's certainly been a bit of a challenge these last 12 months. And uh, I mean, when the, when the venues finally reopen, whenever that may be, I really want to know what is going to be your first song at your first live show. Oh man, that's a really good question. <laughs> uh, maybe it will be the Cat's Pajamas, which is one I did with a chap called Mr. Frisbee, uh, which is all about how amazing you are. And it's quite a nice to. It's not specifically you, I mean, you are amazing. Oh, I'm not, sorry, I thought you were about me then. It's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> that's what we're in the making. I'm still working on that. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, songs celebrating everybody is quite nice, and I'm lucky I've got a lot of songs that do that. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, a cool one to go for. And uh, um, I mean, talking about celebrating people, on the flip side of that, uh, not celebrating people, because there's been a kind of comedic on-off battle between you and Mr. Big, the gentleman rhymer over the years. So I'm dying to know, at this moment in time, are you guys friends? We are pals. We're real pals. <laughs> 10 years, I mean, in some ways it was great for both of us because it sort of, it tied us together uh, mm -hmm. and, and brought both of us kind of each other's fans, I think. Um, but I do slightly regret releasing a diss song 10 years ago <laughs> to talk about for the rest of my life. I think if we're both doing a show at the same time, like if we're playing together, yeah. one of my sort of more well-known songs that people go, oh, why didn't you play that song? And, you know, they, he's in the audience, I'm bigging him up one minute and the next minute I'm calling him a... <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's you funny. YouTube and songs, ladies and gentlemen. Is You'll have to do a 2021 remix of I Love Mr. B. <laughs> Flip it on its head. I can't, I can't <laughs> a bit in it, you know, there is a, because chat pop is the tiniest, most, you know, uh, niche within a niche mm. genre, and there's only about four people doing it. I quite like the family aspect of uh, chat pop like you know there's Madame Misfit who I definitely think of as my little sister um, and Mr B I do think of as a kind of sort of slightly older cooler brother yeah um, brother from another mother I'm just taking the mickey out of him all the time and going in the room and stealing his stuff <laughs> oh, I love it no it is it is true to be said that it is it is quite a small community but I think with that becomes as you say that the kind of family vibe I mean, you've, you've really been embraced by the steampunk community. Also, the electro swing fans as well. So I think, you know, it's, it's a really cool kind of cool kind of thing to be doing. So, yeah, yeah pops it works. to you. It all works. And I don't think anyone takes anything too seriously, which is good. Do you know what? That's refreshing, though. I think in this day and age, with dance music especially, too many people take themselves too seriously. Yeah, so. definitely. Well, that's why electro, I think we said it before, like, but that's why electro swing's so good because, you know, it... it, it is really playful and it's asking to just mess about which is just the best thing exactly and i'd like to speak to you about um lockdown i mean normally at this point i'd be asking people what have they been up to but with you it's like what haven't you been up to you've <laughs> literally i just can't keep up with everything and you've, you've been putting some really heartfelt posts up as well obviously you had like your lockdown blues i uh, a little prop of it Prof puppets that you shared and also sending tea out to teachers can you tell us more about that because there's some amazing stuff going on there well i suppose in yeah in lieu of in lieu of sort of doing much uh, in the way of, sort of live streaming uh it's been quite i've been looking for other ways to connect with people really and you know and just to remind people that no one's having a good time, no one's doing really well. Like it's easy to go on Facebook and see lots of smiling families or people out for walks or baking their bread and going, oh, f <laughs> yeah. everyone's doing a really good job of this. They all seem to be fine and I'm not, I'm a mess, you know, I'm not achieving anything or I'm tired all the time. And it was just, it was really just to kind of connect with people on that as real a level as possible and just to say, look, none of us are doing well. We're all having a bad time, particularly in this third lockdown where you, the novelty is gone and the nervous excitement is, is out of here even the routine is becoming yeah. incredibly tedious so I think it's, it's really just that it's just saying look I'm having a bit of a shit time too and don't worry if you are as well <laughs> a friend of mine put it really well I said we're all holding each other up at the moment and that's you know that's just my bit of holding everybody up oh it's amazing it, it's been yeah it's been lovely to see as well I love the picture with you and your daughter like under all the, the pa packets of tea that you were about to send out <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I really ever did that I shouldn't have I shouldn't have offered it to all teachers I should have offered it to some teachers I... <laughs> yeah the floodgates have opened suddenly you've been left with no tea not even tea <laughs> for your own cup of tea <laughs> don't worry I've always got a stash within the stash that I'm of course want. you have <laughs> and as well as your own blend of tea you've got an impressive array of merchandise and comics so i'm fascinated to know how all these tie in together well that's a nice thing just like you do uh, with all your um, brilliant electro swing stuff it's all about mm -hmm. the collaboration isn't it that's where all the fun comes from a lot of the time yeah um and so it's just when when people get in touch with me if i've got the the time to do it and i like what they're doing i normally go yeah let's do the thing mm -hmm. and then you end up with like cool t-shirts and comic books and you know radio plays and all that kind of stuff yeah um, and it's been particularly handy like you know my job has gone from being a live performer to basically selling things with my face on like a kind of sort of steampunk del boy 
<laughs> yeah, whatever it, works. I'm just happy people are buying the thing. No, know, it, it props to you. you. You've done an awesome job. You are a, a really strong brand, as you say. I'm waiting for the Professor Elemental like action man. I'm going, oh, it's a thing. I'm, I'm literally. Is it actually? I'm like a massive. I can't show you because I've got this. Um, uh, I'm in the mansion, obviously. But yeah. my office is filled with toys um, and action figures. And there's a particular range from when I was little that I was like, I want a professor one of those. <laughs> oh, wow. Sign me up for one. <laughs> I love it. That's really great. I been. I had a dream the other day that I was rapping with one of my favourite rappers wearing a, a golden suit. Uh, and so I woke up and commissioned the golden suit and got in touch with the rapper and just thought you can kind of achieve your dreams as long as they're kind of you know manageably small well yeah exactly reach the stars and who, who is the, who's the rapper I'm dying to know Oh man, he's, he's an MC called Dylan, and uh, he's kind of he's an underground cat, but he's mm -hmm. absolutely my favourite MC uh, at the moment in the states. Anyway, um, he does some stuff with Tom Carolina as well. Uh, so like, yeah, if I've had a dream, I'm rapping with him, then it must come true. Amazing. That, that's a great mantra. I know you wrap it up in comedy, but do you know what? It's a really strong message of people. Don't stop chasing your dreams because, as you say, if you reach for the stars, then great things will happen. So. I mean, within reason, like if you dream that you've got a pet whale or, you know, that you're <laughs> king of the world, then perhaps... Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe rein that one in, but yeah. yeah, it's good to have aspirations. <laughs> and uh, again, I've been I've been loving snooping on your website because there's just so much cool stuff on there. I could go down a rabbit hole down there. And um, I noticed that you'd um, appeared on a podcast, Superheroes with Dummies. Uh, so I'm just curious to know how that one came about, really. I was a friend of mine called... Steve, who runs the or works on the podcast with these other chaps, uh, and I knew he was doing it. And I've got a real, in amongst my love for comics, I really love like the worst superheroes, just the ones that don't get any love. I find I find the idea of that kind of fascinating. Yes. Uh, and so yeah, just went on and talked about my favourite superhero, which was Plastic Man, who um, most uh, <laughs> most people don't know of or like, and that makes me like him even more. And I, 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 when I was writing my list of questions, I was like, oh, this is one that I really want to know. So in a hypothetical universe, so if anything could be, uh, I'd like to know if you were a superhero, what would your superpowers be? Um, I think I think I'll have I'll, I'll have Plastic Man's powers because he's got those kind of weird. He can stretch. He's what like like Mr. Fantastic from Fantastic Four, but he uses them in a really innovative way. In that he'll just be like, "Oh, I'm a lamp. No, I'm a car. And no, I'm going to fly like a plane." Um, and yeah, but always sort of looks the same while he does it. And I think that would unnerve people and be really funny. And at the end of the day, anything that is funny is worth doing. Absolutely, I love it. I mean, you're 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 a kind of like real life superhero in a, in a way, aren't you? So you've already got like superpowers. Like your comedy is your superpower, I'd say. Thanks, mate. That's no worries. That was a lovely thing to say, actually, wasn't it? Oh, well done, Emma. <laughs> and uh, we've got some questions for you from the uh, Prohibition listeners, uh, the Electro Swing community, and the Chat Pop community. Um, we've got quite a few actually. Um, so you're, you're, you oh, people want to know yeah, about before you. Before we get to them, can yeah. I ask, can I ask you a question? Because you started your electro swing Kickstarter at all the other day. Yes, I did. Um, and I want to know more about what you're planning to do in the future with it because I just love the idea. Ah, uh, shucks! It's his radio, but I'm blushing. Uh, that's really lovely of you to ask. I mean, obviously, it's interviews about you, but as soon as you have asked, um, yeah. So it is the uh, Prohibition Swing Sisters uh, Kickstarter project, which is uh, raising money to turn our dream of uh, releasing a female-fronted electro swing compilation album. That was a bit of a mouthful. No, into a re into a reality. <laughs> so um, we are about fifty percent of the way through. Um, this interview is going out on the 1st of February and when it goes out we will have six days left to meet our target. So guys, if you want to help us, I mean we are 50% of the way through, if we end up reaching the, the target we are going to do a stretch goal uh, which will enable us to bring even more awesome things into the mix because we have got some pretty cool stuff going on there. Obviously we've got Madam Misfit which is from the Chat Pop community tick, uh, Mario Leve from Dutty Moonshine, uh, Blush Fox Trio from Chicago. They are the prettiest, most um, sassy ladies you'll ever meet. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's loads of cool things going on. So um, 
Um, as you have asked, I will drop the link to the Kickstarter no, you uh, must, campaign. You must, because I, yeah, I supported yeah. it the other day and, and it enabled me to go, oh, let's check out some of the artists and just found found some lovely music by people like um, uh, Tallulah Good Times and stuff like that. Just, yes, we mustn't forget Tallulah. She is smashing it at the moment. And um, thank you, Prof, for your support. Um, it means the absolute world. I love, that's one thing I love about our community. Uh, musicians are like, you know, everybody's in it together. So yeah, it, it, it's really great. Uh, once these compilation is like a massive success, what's the next thing you're going to do? Let, once, you know, the world returns to some kind of normality, yeah. what's your sort of future plans for it? Uh, the, well, the, the logical next step is, obviously, as you say, when things return to normal, is we're going to be doing some Swing Sisters live shows. Nice. Um, yeah, bringing the ladies to the scene. Obviously, um, we're really, I'm really fortunate with Prohibition Project to be, uh, one thing that lockdown has brought is the opportunity to kind of connect with artists all the way around the world. Uh, so it would be nice to kind of take the brand all the way around the world and take it to the cities uh, with the girls who are, you know, are part of the project over there. So yeah, that's I totally do that. There is there between the sort of convention scene and the established sort of electro swing scene that's over there. There, there are some like really cool events like the sort of vintage, sort of big vintage exactly. type things. Yeah, like in San Francisco and stuff. That I mean, I could imagine you smashing it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean. Although it's a female project as well, I think it's really important for me to say, like, I'm really keen to make this a serious project. It, it's a celebration of women rather than seeing women as a token and using girls to kind of, um, to spark interest. That's because, you know, you do get some female kind of like lineups and they're so cringe. It's like ladies night and all this <laughs> stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, you want to go beyond the novelty and, and be like a unified, powerful force. Exactly. Kind of novelty thing. But yeah. I think, yeah, Electro Swing is the perfect sort of genre for that in some ways because, it, you know, it's it's often quite female-led. But I think, yeah, putting women at the forefront will make it even more spectacular. Exactly. So, yeah, thank you for asking. Uh, but back to you because it is about you today. Back to me. <laughs> Yeah, back to you. You are the star of the show. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we'll kick off with the fan questions, actually. Um, on the subject of ladies, this has actually come from Rowan. Uh, she's the compare for Prohibition, so that's a nice tie-in for the Swing Sisters. She'd like to know what's your favourite kind of tea and how do you take it? Um, I'm, I'm a quantity over quality kind of person. Mm -hmm. Um, and, like just recently, I, every morning, because I wake up first, I bring my other half a cup of tea. Yeah. And even this year, she's still not quite happy with the quality levels that are being delivered. And it's still giving me tips on how to make a better cup of tea, uh, which I resent, but also am quite grateful for. And she does frequently say, if your fans knew that I'm the one behind the power, give, telling people how to make tea. Because I just like lots of it. I don't really even yeah. care where it comes from. I would just and inject it into myself and drink <laughs> loads and loads of cups of fairly substandard tea if necessary. I just want I just want I want the quantity. Just the quantity. I think I'm like that with most things in life. Yeah. That's good stuff. Fair enough. That was great. Thank you for that question, Rube. And uh, we've got a, a, a quite a funny question here actually uh, from Carsten. And he actually came to see you. Um, he flew over from Germany uh, when you came to play at Prohibition. Uh, but he would like to know, have you ever visited any tropical countries or would you like to wearing your colonial outfit, maybe hunting or catching butterflies? <laughs> That's a nice <laughs> idea. Um, I did go, did, went to Cambodia, had it was a very strange connection and did some shows in Cambodia, um, which were lovely. Mm -hmm. And then the person who got me over got me to do, he said, oh, will you do a rap workshop with some local kids who don't get a lot of, you know, people through for their education. And I went deep into the Cambodian jungle to do a rap workshop with these kids to help them with their English. Um, which on the one hand was, was really a wonderful experience and on the other hand for a second I stepped out of myself and thought there's a white man in a colonial outfit <laughs> native children how to speak English is this good? I don't know <laughs> I do a good thing here so uh, yeah and I think uh, you know I have I had to be more aware of this outfit because this was just like something I borrowed off a mate 10 years ago and <laughs> times change and people question you know, rightly quite you know question the nation's past I'm still stuck in a colonial outfit doing black music as a white man it's very uh, the whole thing is a minefield to be honest I am um, yeah um, which just means that I'm having to be even more sort of like strident and left wing just to really 
lay my cards on the table at all times so everybody knows where I stand. Yeah, what, what, I, I know he had another prompt to this question that I was meant to ask earlier on and I totally forgot. Where did the colonial influence come from? <laughs> It just, but just, he had it in the house and I found the hat in a shop. I didn't, I had no intention of anything to do with it being colonial at all. And, <laughs> and now I'm completely stuck with it. I can't change my hat and wear like a little funny top hat. It would, that would be disastrous. <laughs> no, I don't there think are that. people out there now going, oh, who's this, who's this racist in a, in a pith helmet trying to do rap music? Like, it is a nightmare, to be honest, Emma. I don't. <laughs> And a, a nightmare of my own making. So. Yeah, are you too far down there? Uh, too, too far, far down, down the rabbit down hole? Down. They're going back now. Exactly, you committed. Oh, Carson, that's a great question. Thank you. And uh, Nemu, I think that's how you say your name. Sorry if I've got it wrong. Uh, they, they, they'd like to know what's the silliest thing that you've ever done when on a stage. <laughs> As, as you said those words, like a thousand images. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Just terrible mistakes that I've made on stage thinking it would be a good idea. Um, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to put that down. I once, I, I once had a little yellow, yellow dress on under my professor outfit because I thought there hadn't been that many cross-dressing rappers and so I sort of um, took my... While I was rapping, I stripped down to a very small yellow dress yeah. and wore that. I've worn a, and for a while I was wearing these silver leggings under my main trousers to do a kind of like a sort of song where I'm chatting up a lady and then my other half came to the show and sort of pointed out the thing that everyone had been too polite to say. It's like, you really, those, those <laughs> leggings are too small for you. Oh, no. Not good, Paul. People will stop. <laughs> the people are horrified. Oh, God, I had no idea. <laughs> so, um, yeah, oh, so it's, it's, yeah it's, it's gone wrong as many times as it's gone right. But you have to experiment. <laughs> Exactly, and, and you know things do go wrong, and it's you can you can make it part of the show. Do you know what I mean? So. Most of the time, you can. Like, there's been a couple of times where you know have been flawed, either getting someone up on stage and they've been too drunk, or choosing the wrong person and then them ending up in tears, even though you were trying to sort of be in, uh, just yeah. Oh no! Really wrong. There should be a, con a, a like a consent form that you need to sign at one of the shows. If you're going to come up on stage, do it's not yeah, here, do not cry, do not be drunk. Well, that's the problem, like because you know, I want to get people up on stage. I think increasingly, I try and do it in a way. I think the, the, there's a lot of interesting stuff to do with the dynamic of getting someone up on stage but not having them feel like an idiot for having done so like I want to celebrate people yeah so it's really easy to do cruel comedy where you get someone up on stage take the piss out of them and send them on their way <laughs> and that, and you can get a cheap laugh out of that but it's a horrible yeah. thing to do and I remember doing that when I first started and thinking no this isn't right so now trying to find comedy where you're bigging people up but also making the rest of the audience laugh is an interesting dynamic so yeah, yeah hopefully I won't need a consent form because I'm making and feel good if it goes right i love that that's great a lot a lot of comedy is like you look you watch it and you're like you see the audience like cowering into their chairs like please don't pick me i know i want people to be like oh i hope he picks me and that's yeah. not always going to be the case but at least if i pick someone who doesn't want it i want them to go away going oh, okay well that was all right because at least exactly a massive round of applause yeah right? That was great. Great question there, Nimi. Thank you. And Angelica would like to know, this is another great question. They're putting me out of a job. Uh, if there was a theme park called Professor Elemental Land, what would be its greatest attractions? Absolutely awesome oh. question. I mean, it is, you know, that's we were talking about dreams earlier. That's something I've dreamed before and might be a while, while off making that one come true. I think the... The, the, the oh, it would either be a kind of like walk through Elemental Manor, or it would be no, it would be a huge roller coaster based around a giant golden statue of me. <laughs> You'd be going in and out and up and round and through my hat and in my ears and that's yeah and that would be good. And each cart would be like a little Jeffrey monkey. Oh my God, sign me up. We <laughs> well, need to make this really, happen. It'd be quite dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, we need to make a crowdfunder to fund Professor Elemental Land. 
<laughs> Imagine. Oh, I am about to win it. It's great. I'm already there. I'm already on the roller coaster. Well, I have thought of, you know, if I considered putting on a festival at one point, I'm making like a little professional elemental festival. But then I remembered that like all fun ideas, all silly, wacky fun ideas, the actuality of it would be mostly filling out forms, looking for council permission for a portal over. And <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. Spent it the whole weekend going, oh my God, what's going on? I can't enjoy it. You never enjoy your own events. I don't because you're exactly. working. So I'll, I'll just go mess up other people's festivals instead. <laughs> exactly. Or get somebody else to make a, a festival under your name and then you can turn up and enjoy it. Yes, that's much better. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, brilliant. And Sarah, Miss Mad or Miss Fit, we have to give a shout out to her. She sneaked in with a question. She's not asked something, has she? She has, actually, but it, it is a serious question, actually. It's quite a good one. Um, she says, you've been releasing music with Tom Karun... You'll have to help me out with this surname. Karun... Karuana. Karuana, thank you. Yeah, you've been releasing the music with him for over 10 years. Uh, he's produced the majority of your music. What makes the bromance that you guys have so strong? Oh, that's so nice. I think it's a genuine uh, want to just hang out and have fun all the time. And every time we do a project, we we work really hard on it individually. But when we get together, we sort of save all the fun bits to do together, like all the kind of skits and the sort of mm -hmm. silly nonsense. And I think that is the key for any collaboration, particularly a long term one. Yeah. Is you've got to find someone you want to hang out with in the first place. I only ever work with people that I would want to spend some time with. <laughs> Absolutely fair. <laughs> yeah, you, you need to get on. So yeah, that, that was cool. Same with Madam Misfit and yourself. You know, your people that if we lived a bit closer, would probably come round for a cup of tea. Exactly. So if you don't close to them. At least you can kind of make music and keep the contact going that way. Yeah, love it. Thanks for that question, Sarah. And the final one for you uh, from Nicholas. He'd like to know: Was it a difficult process of starting and growing your website? And I'm going to extend this one to include Patreon as well because you're doing such an amazing job with that one. Oh, thanks, love. Um, yeah, it it wasn't. It wasn't. I think because it helped that I'd had lots of jobs that I hated for years, and I've been fired <laughs> from all these different office jobs, and I just I was so angry. <laughs> So when I finally got into this, I was like, right, I'm going to make this a success. And I was able to use lots of the really boring skills that I picked up in all these awful jobs uh, to make it work. So it sort of, it didn't feel that. There was obviously a bit of a, like, like um, flying without a seatbelt. That's not a phrase. Anyway, it was, it was a bit, it was a bit scary flying without a seatbelt. Yeah, I know where you go with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Dangerous, yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> It felt a bit dangerous just because I had kids and I was a bit scared about what, yeah. you know, what would happen if I didn't get it right. So, but then that fuels the, you know, if you if you wonder how I get the energy to keep all this stuff going, it's just a desperation and uh, not to get a real job. I'm terrified of that. That's the that's my one weakness, getting a real job. So yeah. I'm with you on that one. It's amazing what you'll do. I work yeah. like five times as hard as I would if I yeah. just had a normal job. But I just I will do anything not to have to work. Exactly. Hard. I would do anything myself to avoid getting a, a normal job as well. Like, oh my gosh. And uh, I just want to ask you, because um, we are coming to the end of the interview, what have you got on the plan for 2021? I know gigs are still kind of like a grey area, but what, what other plans have you got? Well, the main, the, they've got one big thing that I want to do. Normally I've got all these little kind of little missions, but this time I've got one big thing, which is an album called Nemesis. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote it before COVID even happened. And it's really strange because I'm just finishing recording it now. Uh, and without giving too much of the story away, most of it takes place with me trapped in my own mansion. Ooh. And I'm just trapped in my little manor house trying to escape and facing peril in various rooms. And recording that while we're in the middle of a lockdown is a really strange experience. It's yeah. like cathartic, really. Um, but it's in terms of like uh, musically and uh, the story and every, every aspect of it is probably the most ambitious thing I've ever tried. So hopefully that will all come out in spring but if i mess it up then it'll come out in autumn and it will have comics and reagan guest stars and rah, everything uh, culminated into one that sounds amazing i can't wait i always get excited when you release new music so yeah and um just got a bit of a cheeky quick fire round that i always like to do to finish off the uh prohibition interview so no thinking don't overthink it uh, because obviously you're a big fan of tea there had to be this question hobnobs or digestives for your bit for your tea I shall have a dark chocolate, dark 
Shock Chuck, Chuck, I can't even say them. I like them. <laughs> Dark Chuck oh, Digestive. Digestive. Do you know what? That's so strange because that's what I bought from the shop yesterday <laughs> to go with my bruised dark chocolate digestive. I'd now. I'd love one. <laughs> I'm going to have one when we come off this, uh, oh, come off this interview. <laughs> and, uh, this is probably going to be a rotten question. Chat pop or hip hop? It's really hard to decide. I like them both equally. <laughs> listen, I love my chat pop brothers and sisters, but I just, I listen to so much hip hop. I, I can't help it. It's my first love. That's fine. Yeah, you really like in her part. That's that's brilliant. And uh, now you've you've had that question: whiskey or gin? We could probably do one of those. Say that again. Whiskey or gin? Oh, uh, gin. I'm uh, b- bizarrely, I can't I can't drink much in the way of spirits, but I can often get away with a gin, and it suits the prof, doesn't it? He loves a gin. Exactly. Yes, it does. And uh, what three things do you always take to a gig with you? <laughs> uh, not my silver leggings, not anymore. No, yeah, uh, leave those ones at home. <laughs> it cha- It changes from from time to time. I always take a small wooden flute, um, a gorilla mask, uh, and at the moment, two large signs saying "You are really loved," which I use for a song. But I mean, to be honest, the customs when I've been travelling doing tours have opened my suitcase, taken one look, and gone, "Oh my god!" <laughs> Just like zipped it back up again. <laughs> Yeah, don't even want to, we don't even want to interrogate this man, it's far too strange. <laughs> Probably for the best we just Yeah, him. we'll just let him go. Oh no, that's brilliant. And uh, that, just got one final question. Um, now this question came about when I had Jamie Berry on the show. And um, when I asked him, what three things do you always take to gig with you? What are the things that he took with sandwiches? <laughs> so it sounds a bit strange. I mean, it sounds sensible. So ever, ever, ever since then, it's been a winning theme. I want to know what Professor Elemental has in his sandwiches. Yeah, Jamie Berry's was BLT, by the way. Nick Hollywood's was tuna mayo. Uh, right. Tallulah Good Times, no, sorry. Um, Cherie um, Little Violet was vegan sandwich. Tallulah was something continental. And Pink Power Stella was on the tuna vibe as well. So yeah, let's see what you go for. Well, because uh, I haven't progressed in either my musical tastes or my cultural tastes since I was about 12, it's a lot of peanut butter sandwiches, but like loads of them. So no matter, if I even got trapped in my car for a week, I would be all right eating peanut butter sandwiches. I love it. The man after being hot, do you? But it's crunchy or smooth peanut butter? Obviously crunchy, smooth. Obviously, yeah, smooth. It like gets sticks to the roof of your mouth, doesn't it? It's just smooth. Wrong. Why, why would you ever be? In, you know, you could choose either one, and you go, oh, I reckon I'll have smooth, unless you had no teeth or tongue. <laughs> Exactly, and then you probably wouldn't be choosing a sandwich if that was the case. So, <laughs> uh, well, Prophet, I was going to say Paul, Paul or Prof, both of you. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Good luck with all your stuff as well. Thanks so much for having me. So there we have it. That was my interview with Professor Elemental. I hope you guys enjoyed listening as much as I enjoyed putting it together. Now, before we head into his top 10 electro swing tracks, I'd just like to play one of his own songs because he didn't put any of his own material in his top 10. So this one is brand new from Professor Elemental, track entitled Snake Oil. It is available to download from his website. The link to that is in the YouTube and Mixcloud comments, along with the full track list for the show. If you're over on Spotify, just need to head over to YouTube or Mixcloud and search for Prohibition MCR. Hey buddy, do you like to swing? Come with me. You're listening to Emma Claire, the best of all things swinging at Prohibition Radio. Radio, 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 radio. There's plenty of room. Room at the back, sir, if you want to make your way through the through the flap there. Come on through. <laughs> Sit right down, stand right there Madam, don't be scared, sir, there are no chairs Can you feel the tension? You could slice it with a knife This might be the most important night of your life Because tonight you found the carnival, the master barker Ringmaster on stage, but stranger darker Cast an eye to the door of the insanitarium Ride the cyclone, step inside imaginariums Three card molly, all sorts of prizes Get the ball in the basket on all three tries Bargain for your desires right before your eyes From the elderly to middle, from the kids to knee high It's only two shillings, maybe three to start A little chalk on your back if you're an easy mark Last of a lost art lurking under the surface Of a circular circuit of a three-ring circus I'm a snake oil salesman, the first class 
double back For a world far under On the edge of your town There's a show little train From a snake oil salesman To be not parade I'm a snake oil salesman A first class hunter Carnival back For a world far under On the edge of your town There's a show little train From a snake oil salesman To be not parade At the corner of the carnival, I'm stretching a grin. At the entrance, I'm ready to beckon you in. Let me begin, you'll get treachery, pleasure and sins. Taxidermy courtiers, skeleton kings. I'll trade their royal skin for a cyclops in a jar. I'm a snake oil salesman, dangerously dark. I'll swap a dust-covered mask of God's true face for a tapeworm in a jar made of an old shoelace. Now trade me the bone of the last mermaid. And I'll give you medicine for fairy first aid You can mend broken wings with cherub feathers I've got many things to trade But never, ever tell a soul what you've seen Or repeat my methods Or I'll return when you least expect it I suggest you respect it Move on to the next tent if you're not interested I'm a steak oil salesman, a first class huckster Carnival bark for a world of your town, there's a show little train from a snake oil salesman to be not parade. I'm a snake oil salesman, a first class hamster, carnival bark for a world far under. On the edge of your town, there's a show little train from a snake oil salesman to be not parade. Illegal oddities and technical impossibilities, unwilling volunteers and medical curiosities. How can one so weighty be so graceful and dainty? This is bearded ladies, lobster men, and giant babies, apart but accomplished, as Maneer the human ostrich. Some say hard, but I promise that the weird here will astonish this Frank Latini with 14 toes and three feet. Unzee the hirsute wonder, a thousand more freaks. Too many limbs, or maybe far from enough. Gaze in wonder at them all, this is far from a bluff. I've got fireproof women and learned pigs. And the tiniest little lady, how can they live? I'm a product of my age, and my cage is recreated. Can you take it? Are you shaking? It seems you're agitated. I'll take nature's aberrations and celebrate creation for the sake of education, the sake of celebration. I'm, I'm a steak oil salesman, a first class huckster. Carnival bark for a world far under On the edge of your town There's a show little train From a snake oil salesman to be not parade I'm a snake oil salesman A first class huckster Carnival bark for a world far under On the edge of your town There's a show little train From a snake oil salesman to be not parade Hello, I'm Professor Elemental, and you're not. And you're listening to my very favourite electro swing tunes, and some more besides. <laughs> Woo, we can't take it no more. One, two, three, in the place to be. MF Doom, Talib Kweli. Oh, here we go. On born days, I used to blow out the candles, and every Saturday watch cartoons at noon, and then I switched to Ralph and Daniels. I was... Making up a miracle flow over a cereal bowl and a pause beat from my stereo. Rhyme stronger than Popeye with the spinach out gangster like a frog or courageous cat and minute mouth. Yeah, baby, I'm tripping and it's just a cartoon of you. But I got chills when I heard I'm doing flip the Scooby Doo. And I might be bugging, but it seemed to me that cartoons be realer than reality TV. They inspire my decision to be open and listen, but folks got it all twisted like a yoga position. Like, in order to spit it dope, you gotta have a criminal past that's similar to the cast the different strokes. Me and my people break bread, sit and smoke the conversation rich, but that depends on what you consider broke. I draw on anything for inspiration. A fond memory, a piece of paper, walls, and a train station. It's just that I'm old school like that. Roll that rap over souls like that. It's just that I'm old school like that 
Roll that rap over soldiers like that. Oh, school, just tell them folks you like that. Roll that rap over soldiers like that. Just tell them folks you like that. Roll that rap over soldiers like that. And we'll be right back after these messages, fellas. Grab your nut sacks, cheeks, squeeze your breasts. We ain't all that grown. It's still funny, like going to the store on your own with rainbow money. Since then, had an insane flow, sunny. Walking to the corner, rhyming in the rain, nose runny. Break dancing, maybe ten. Bummy is when Sub Rock would run up handspring, Arabian summy. Ooh, like a Hong Kong fooey kick. Or a weekend afternoon karate movie flick. Slept good, no justice, no peace. Woody kept it hoodie, never discussed it with police. Shot the fair one, nobody ran to get the gat or felt they had to put it up in their raps to set it fat. And since when lyrical skills had to do with killing the cat? What type of chitlins is that? The super villain has the bat, hydrotonic. Whoever willing to ride, provide raw chronic. It's just that I'm old school like that. Roll that rap over soldiers like that. It's just that I'm old school like that. Roll that rap over soldiers like that. It's just that I'm old school like that. Roll that rap over soldiers like that. It's just that I'm old school like that. Roll that rap over soldiers like that. Find us on Facebook, Facebook.com, Prohibition MCR. Cause you know jam don't shake. 
Yes, yes, she's got what it takes. Yes, yes, she's got what it takes. She's got what it takes. She's got what it takes. Like a peacock, wiggles like a snake. Let me tell you, for goodness sake, it must be jelly, 'cause you know jam don't shake.
Find us on Facebook, facebook.com, Prohibition MCR.
Hashtag Prohibition MCR. Wow, isn't this marvelous? Look at you all, absolutely fantastic. Particularly you, sir. I feel like I'm in Aladdin's cave, surrounded by the treasures of all you amazing people. This, my fine fellows, is a song I've written for you. True you. I want to meet you, greet you and lick your face. Are you from this planet or outer space? My friendship extends across the galaxy. Everyone's invited, come party with me. There's a sign on the door that say, hey, just beware. No room in here for those who stare. Individuality's the theme for tonight. Put on your glad rags, no bullies in sight.
here is part of the drake Big for the man against so many blows to the base Don't show if they know what it takes They said it's this to the land and it ill is the herb Otherwise known as I say it's trust you blood Got boss to the fuck you up and leave you Bully bags did enough to drop a map Go over down to the hungry son You better save no tell them when lunch will come When I spit you're in trouble blood MC jump up and run like a bunch of mugs They'll say to the idiots get that in your head you fucking cunts We've been the dirty moonshine big band Blast the brass in the base and the man got sick with the blast Cause we understand how to mold on the road with the wrong with the plan We'll hit you up here's what we got We call the shots and not the man Elemental for providing us with a super selection of electro swing and bass heavy beats. That was awesome. That's all for me. I should be back with you in March for International Women's Day with a very special show. Toledo Good Times will be taking over interview duties and she'll actually be chatting to me. That's going to be a bit of a strange one being in the hot seat. We'll be talking about all things swing sisters and women in electro swing music. So I look forward to that one and I shall see you next month. What's that you say? You gotta turn on the radio. Okay. You got to listen to Prohibition Radio with Emma Claire. You got to listen to Prohibition Radio with Emma Claire.